Well, hello everyone, and I want to start things off by saying massive thank you to Creative Assembly for once again giving us access to the latest and greatest of Total War. And it's a lovely franchise. Here we've got Total War Rome Remastered. This was well, this was one of my favourite Total Wars of all time back in the day. I loved the Showtime Commanders. If you've never seen it, I definitely recommend looking them up. It's where they got a bunch of people and uh, they just basically gave them some units, gave them some history and used the same engine as Rome Total War to create battles and had to try and fight these historic battles. Oh, it was a great show! And it used the Total War engine and I would love for it to come back. Ten Commander is one of my favourite TV shows of all time. Rome Total War is one of my favourite games of all time. And now it's been remastered! And they've done a really great job and one of the things I really love about this remaster, I've played about an hour so far just to get a touch base is there's a lot of quality of life improvements. Obviously Rome's a really old game. Really old game. And the remaster there brings a lot of quality of life that just wasn't there back in the day. So uh, yeah, we're not giving a field review here. We're just going to start going in and start a campaign. I'm thinking I'm going to be doing Julii because that is the stereotypical Rome uh, campaign lovely stuff uh, they do lose brownie points here because we don't have that red screen with the archers sort of flowing if you remember the one that sort of had from the past if i swear they had like the archers appearing here and them moving down across the screen it was like shadow you just seen silhouettes on the red screen they do lose brownie points for that but not a lot because that is a big nostalgia hit i'm just going they're not hitting it they're not getting that nostalgia hit there yeah but i'm gonna stop rambling we need to play the game what are we doing still sitting here Yes, Imperial Campaign! And here's one of the things, I really like how they've done this. Back in the day, Rome, all the other factions were locked behind a uh, complete your first campaign sort of... Our tutorial off. Uh, I wanted to say paywall, but it's not a paywall, it's a completionist wall, an unlock. And it made it so special up until... It was years! Because when I first played Rome Total War, I was a little tiny nipper, you got to remember. And so, incompetent at the game would be an understatement, and I never completed the game. It was years before I finished my first campaign, and I was like, oh, you've actually got all these other factions. So I like how they've got this here. But you can also see this faction is unlocked until they're beaten in the campaign, or you do go into the options, advanced tab, you disable that. So you can get access to them all straight away, or you can unlock them. And it's kind of like a best of both, and lets people have the way they want. I think I'm going to unlock them, because, again, it's that nostalgia hit. I want to be like, yes, I've got this faction, I can play them now. I want to unlock them. So, yes, um... I'm thinking for the first campaign, we're going to do medium, medium. We're going to set it to short campaign for now because there's nothing to stop us continuing it to the long campaign goals, if we so desire, afterwards. And at least for the first one, we'll do the short campaign and then we maybe jump onto something just to get a wee bit of variety. So I think maybe the first campaign we'll do short campaign, maybe the second one do long. But we'll see, we'll see. Nothing set in stone. And I'm saying for the first one, yes, medium, because... Uh, I didn't play Total War. I played. I've played every single Total War today. Like even like the sagas, Napoleon, the Fall of the Samurai sub ones. I've played them all, but I didn't play any of them competently until about Shogun Two. Shogun Two was that point where I went from being a blundering buffoon, just sort of playing the game through on the easiest difficulties, to and still failing campaigns normally to actually playing on, like, uh, I think I moved up to hard on Shogun 2 and actually still was normally winning campaigns. Like, if I actually sat down and didn't let them, like, die off because I'd stopped playing, you know what I mean? So, yes, I think we're going to start off as medium because Shogun 2 is also kind of like the point where Total Wars become much more modern, some of the mechanics change. So I think medium for our first campaign, just to test if I'm skilled enough, to be honest. Because, yeah, I've not yeah, I'm only an hour deep in my uh, testing the grounds of this playthrough. So this, after that, we'll probably go up to if I find me jump easy, we'll probably go up to hard, then very hard, depending on what faction we're doing. This is an easy faction as well. 
All three of these are easy factions. Romans are quite strong, so... Yeah, we'll leave it on medium for now and we'll just see how that goes. Because this is a test for me. It's, yeah, this is a test. Uh, Hi, first time. You can lower advice. I don't mind the advice being high. We'll leave it on that. A little bit quiet. Did you think I'd be out here on the frontier without good reason? Yes. Rome needs a strong frontier. No. Rome doesn't need unwashed barbarians at her gates. So, that's why I'm here. The leader of the Julii. To bring Roman order to stinking Gauls. Revenge? That'd be good too. This war against the Gauls won't last long. And when it's done, I've got plans. This is all about power. Power in Rome. Going down that road means dealing with all my rivals. The Senate. The Greeks. Those Carthaginian elephant riders. The Scipii and the Brutii families, too. After all, the man who controls Rome rules the world and one day I will be emperor a nice mix of old and new there there was like a yeah just a nice mix of old and new it was a tad quiet which is a wee bit annoying I might try and up the volume for that bit in the editing if I remember because yeah like I was turning the volume up for me personally not used there and then uh, as soon as it got to the music just dead, I was like, Ugh, turn it down, because I feel like my ears are going to explode. But yeah, I'll see what that sounds like post and uh, loading time. I don't have this on an SSD, so I'm going to pause recording and see you in a second. Right, here we are, everyone. Let us get this show on the road. You can see what we start off with our two settlements here. Very reminiscent of back in the day. I don't know if there has been any balance changes to the starts. Can I be of service? Um, do we start trading with... Is there a way to view diplomacy? That's actually... Because that's one thing I didn't work out earlier. Overlay map. No alerts. No news. No reports. Missions. We've been given a mission to take Segesta. Which will just say will be greatly rewarded, doesn't tell us what. Okay. Pause menu. No governor. Aha, this is what I was looking for. Their faction summaries. Victory conditions. We're just on the small ones. Hey, oh, as well, one quick thing just to. Aha, there's what I was looking for. Their trade partners. We do start trading with them. Okay, good. No. One to quickly point out as well is, as always with these early access builds, this is an early access build. It is not the release build. I've had no issues with it so far, but especially with things like balance and those last few minor glitches and bugs, they're probably getting ironed out just in time for release. So hopefully that's the way it's going to work anyway. Just as always, just remember, it's early access build. It's an early access build, not the final finished product it is not yet released and often for a reason so let's see we've got marble there iron some trade resources to be traded with pottery and we've already got trade rights with the other roman factions so that is good and we're gonna go to go to war with them at some point soon anyway let's put you on the boat And let's bring the boat down and we'll dump them off here, get a trade agreement. Dump them off here, get a trade agreement. Then maybe come up to Makadin and let them explore and see if we can get some more trade agreements. It'll automatically do the most profitable ones out of our ports. Right, let's take a look at what we got here. We start off with a uh, Vabius Julius, two Hastati and a Velites unit. Here is our faction leader, Flavius Julius. 
a Hastati, Triarii, and Roman archers. Good to know. And here, got two units of Hastati and Ulysses. And here we got him with two units of Town Watch. Right, first things first, we've got 5k to spend. Let's spend some money. And I think we're going to want to spend the money on more money, first of all. So, I... You know, let's start off with farmland. And here we'll do the same farmland, farmland, because that'll provide money and population growth. Money and population growth. So we'll start that off straight away. We've got two large towns to start off with. This is one thing that works incredibly different from modern Total Wars. And it's... I like both, to be honest. I hated the new way that Total Wars do it now, where you've got building slots, and you can only do those so many building slots. Back in the day, you could build everything in every town, which sort of made sense. Like, it, it's less strategic, but more accurate, I feel, in the past. Where you could build everything everywhere. You would still focus areas, like, a, oh, this area I want to be in my recruitment area. So we're going to focus on population growth and uh, the recruitment buildings first. Whereas this settlement over here, and then eventually they'd all be able to do everything kind of thing. Yeah, it feels nice to be playing the old style for a change, a breath of fresh air. Which is why it looks like these places have lots of building slots, because literally you can build everything. Obviously you can only build one of the temple branch, but you know what I mean. Okay, so that's the farmland. You know what, as well, we're going to here, we're going to start recruiting. Come to here, we'll recruit a couple of units of town watch. Just for when we take Segesta, I'm going to want some... not going to be able to recruit Town Watch here yet, I don't think. So we'll start recruiting them here so we can move them on over. Orders. 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 Sir. I'm thinking, how aggressive do we be against the Gauls? Do we just go send one army for Segesta and my main army up here to start trying to take Vivatium straight away? considering it I'm considering it or do I focus on Sagasta then go after the goals let's move you to take Sagasta then you know it's sort of like a middle ground I could combine them for now And we can just attack straight away because this doesn't have walls. Let's do so. It's assault. And get our first battle. Oh. It's really not much of a battle. You know, I'm still going to fight it. I was expecting them to have more units than this. But I'm still going to fight it so that I don't take as anywhere near as many losses. Because losses in old school Total Wars, for people that aren't familiar with old school Total Wars as well, losses are a much better harsher thing in old school Total Wars because you didn't have replenishment. You need to be constantly recruiting new units and sending them to the front lines to like replenish those units or retraining the units and hiring new people to fill them out. It's a much more manual experience in older school Total Wars, a much more hands-on experience. So yeah, I want to minimize my losses from this fight and also it gives us a chance to see the battlefield. So yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's go do it. Oh, the music as well. Oh. Oh, that chef's kiss. That that hit of nostalgia. This the the uh, look. Hey, look, a childhood. A childhood is here for me. Right. So let's say uh, I fight this battle. The zoom in. I forgot about the zoom in. Rebellious slaves may think of victory. But we should make them think kindly of their master's whips. They are dead men walking. And before we start, just remember, they are more scared of us, true Romans to a man, than we are of them. Hey, speech over. I missed speeches. Let's start the deployment. See, so the user interface sort of had like an overhaul, which is nice. 
one of the things I really love is I'll take a look at her stati unit here. In the original one, every single man was like a clone. They've actually added some variety in there. It's kind of cool. It's kind of nice. So the units sort of look different, but the same at the same time. It's sort of catch it. It's like close enough to what they were in the past to get that nostalgia hit. But it's like a new enough that it's also feels fresh, feels modern. It's I love it. They've they've balanced it quite well. This sort of nostalgia and the modern. The Roman archer units. Not very historical that one, but still I love them nonetheless. The Velites. Then I've got my Triarii. Triarii! I'm ready to go. And I've got my General and my other General here. You've got to be careful, you can get very unlucky with Generals. I've had uh, battles where my General has died to like... the. Th I don't think it was like the quite the first volley of arrows, but it was like just moving stuff around and the archers got two volleys off or something and he's died and I was like seriously. But yes, let's set up the battle. Are they deployed yet? They are not. It is just literally a little tiny village is what we're fighting over right now. Hastati! Let's get our Hastati, our main battle force. Uh, we are going to group them and we are going to put fire at will on because they do have their pilum which they can throw uh, I'm going to keep the Trarii in reserve because I don't have a way to replenish them yet and they are a very powerful unit uh, like for this stage of the game so uh, yeah we're going to want to keep them as fresh as possible the Hestati are not fodder like, there is none in the Roman army that's really fodder, but they're fodder in comparison. Right, let's get my ranged units. Is that skirmish mode? It is skirmish mode, okay. I couldn't remember if skirmish mode was a thing in the past or not, but it is definitely here. Right, let's get the kill. Let's go. Let's group them too. Right, let's start the battle. So they had one unit of warband and one unit of peasants, wasn't it? Barbarian peasants. And here is the warband, the light infantry. Back in the day, those guys didn't have those jumpers on. But I remember them. Maybe the slave version did, but the Gaul version definitely didn't. Right. Why they started outside, I do not know. Let's move on up. With our forces that I plan to engage with and my these guys for moral support. Or I should say morale support. You know, I may even take this further and put two units like that. Separate them into two different groups of a statue. Move my forces, move! Range for the archers need to move quite a bit closer. You know, charging up hill is always a bad idea. So let's see. Let's get used towards the top of the hill. So they're not getting any momentum bonuses or stuff if they do come charging out. Let's get used right up there. Archers. Let's move these all the way over there actually. Try and get the minimum cover and least chance of hitting my own men. And the arc over as possible. Let's start raining death down upon them. Oh! That, that, I love this one. I love this tune. It's such it's just instantly, I just see time commanders like the cavalry walking in here, the narrator going like. Uh, this is General Bloody 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 Blah on his way to the front lines. Yeah. Can they shoot over there? Do they have line? Yeah, okay. I don't know if they have enough of an arc. Yeah, there's enough of an arc. Enough of an arc there. Lovely. Lovely. Rain death down upon them. Oh, and they're about to get a lot of death rain down upon them because I put fire at will on. And uh, they're going to get ready to fire the prelim. Throw the pilums! Jeff! The gods have filled the heart of the enemy 
general with fear. Now he flees the field like a coward. And there we go. Simple as that. And I don't think I took any losses. Oh wait, no, we took one. One Hastati died. Which good. That was the whole point of us fighting this was to minimise those losses. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's get back to the campaign map now. All right, we're back. And we're going to enslave, I think. Boom. That will hurt Sagasta, but it will bring more population here in the form of slaves and money. That kind of stuff. So let's take a look. Sagasta has no buildings at all. But there is... We are able to build a governor's house. At the time, strongly recommend building a governor's house. Yep. Because Sagasta is as small as a village as can be. But it has the population to expand to become the next level of settlement. So let's do it. Now upgrade it from a little village to a little town or something. And this is a large town. So yeah, it goes... There must be village, small town, large town, small city, large... Say metropolis or something. So you can see here the wall levels, wooden palisades. You can see the garrison soldiers, which is these guys. 198, that doesn't add up to 198, does it? Oh, it does. It does. First, I was just like, that's less than 198. Then I actually added it up and I was like, oh, it is 198. You are going to come over here and just take a look and see what we can see here. There's 332 soldiers in there. There's 294 in there. Mediolanum and Pivatium are probably going to be two of my earliest conquests, not including Sagasta. And that's us building something everywhere. We have quite a bit of money in the bank still. We do have a notification. Uh, the Senate is pleased of note that you have taken the settlement and have been awarded 5,000 denarii. Thank you very much, the Senate. They'll give me a new mission probably in a turn or two. You've already moved, Ready haven't we? Yep, because we're still in the first turn. Let's end our first turn. Gaul seems to be trying to open some form of diplomatic messages. They want trade rights. Well, there's no reason we can't accept that. We'll just be going to war with them very soon. Right, nice to see them weaken in their front. Oh, hello. Right. Perfect. Yep, that is exactly what I want you to do. Come in here. Let's offer them trade rights. Let's also see if we can get map information and offer map information. So trade rights, map information for map information. It's a balanced proposal. Let's see if they accept. They want their demands. No, no, no. Let's say uh, countless proposal. Let's get rid of the money. Let's get rid of the map information. They did trade rights. Right, so there we go. Hop back on the boat. And let's get the boat to hop down to... Oh, they're already at war here. Right, it might just take a wee bit longer to get trade rights then. And you'll notice... It automatically changed our trade route here. Because I was getting 90 or something to the one that was coming down here. But now I've got a trade route with them. I've got 161 there. If I upgrade that port, it should be able to have both... In on the go at once or if I get a port over here that will allow for another trade route there and we probably have yeah we do we've got a trade route coming up here now for at least now the now because I had trade rates with them which we're going to be clearing war on them at some point we can see Sagasta has grown because it finished building that building it is now a town very nice and with a town it comes access to all these new buildings once again let's focus on the land clearance first to get that food on the go Let's come here, take a look at the forces. 
Right, let's leave this uh, guy here, the Vabius Julius, as a governor. And take all the other troops. Into there. They're still happy here. Let's take that one unit of town guard, pop them in there, and then we'll get the other unit when that's done. My main army is squaring off against these guys. So they've got one unit of skirmishers, a couple units of warband, and the cavalry unit, and their general. Yes, master. Only got 158 troops there protecting that now. Your honor. Let's go send them in there to have a wee nosy. Right, here, still building the farm upgrade, still building the farm upgrade, because we've already got the tier 2 one. Mm. Here we've already got the militia barracks, there we've only got that one. Good to know, good to know. Right, I don't think there's anything else I want to do this turn. We already moved the other guy, let's take a look at our notification. Spying mission was a success. Okay, what are these? Diplomatic information. They were the strongest faction on the... Yes, yes, why, well, thank you. I'm the strongest faction in the game right now. Good to know. Right, so we completed our recruitment town watch. We know that. We completed the governor's house. End of turn report. We made some money. So we can see total next turn income. End of turn balance. All good. Right. In the turn. Oh, hello. Where's he going? Just go right up to the border. You know what we're gonna do then? General, we're gonna go right up and stand and face him. Oh yeah, right in his face. Stick that second unit. Pop it over there. I'm not keen on here not having walls and only having that to protect it. Had no notifications that time. It wants me to capture there. Nah, I just got a trade agreement with those guys. Sorry, Senate, I'm not doing that mission. Okay. Still building the farms there. Still building farms there. Still building farms there. I may go to war with these guys next turn. Nice, 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 nice. Right, and turn again. They do have more armies around there, but their troops are a lot weaker than mine. The stat are pretty strong. And with my Pelum and my archers, I just wish we had a couple of units of equity so I didn't have to rely on my general for cavalry charges and stuff. Because as I said, the general may be a powerful unit, but it is incredibly risky. I, Captain. Yes, Captain. Who is this? Okay, it's not. It's not me. I, Captain. Wait, can I quickly? Yes, Captain. Nah, I can't, because I could talk to the Greek diplomat, and that'd be one way to do it. Then I'd come over and start heading up here, looking for Macedon, see if we can get a trade agreement there. You can see this trade agreement's dropped back to this one down here because it's more valuable now. Always goes to the whatever one is the most valuable. Right, we upgraded the farmland. Let's take a look. It's paving roads, a trader, which would be good because we said we've got this port doing a lot of trade for us, and we seem to have a lot of trade coming out. We can see the donkeys coming out and heading all places. The roads would also help. Stables, I was just saying how I really wish we had equities. Okay, their characters disappeared. He's probably in one of these woods. I don't remember seeing him move. Uh, now to lock Velites. The road would take three turns. Everything's going to take three turns apart from the shrine. I think I'm going to do it to shrine to 
not sure how you pronounce this Roman. I was going to say Greek, but it's Roman. Roman god here because I'm thinking of doing this one because this tank, this is my capital. This is probably going to be my main recruitment area. I have the best barracks here and the highest population as it is. So having even more population growth would be good to uh, for recruiting troops, especially. And it's only going to take a turn. Yeah, let's focus on that population growth for now here. As for here, let's get this port built so we can have that unlock our first. Yeah, we'll give a trade fleet and so we'll have a trade fleet coming out of here as well, which will then bring more trade coming along this way. And they'll automatically organize them. So, hello, what the? Where did you come from? And there's another. There's rebel armies are everywhere. Right, so it looks like he's got a unit of Astarte, and then I don't know what the second unit is. We do have a wall here. So I don't think the two units on their own would beat me, but that one unit of Astarte would, yeah. Town Watch are not a powerful unit, but I do have the General. And I would have the towers and other stuff to help me defend, but that's not ideal. Right. You know what, I think we're going to fight this one again because open battlefield and I want to minimize my losses. So yes, I'll seize all in a second. I think the carrion birds will feast upon their dead before the day is done. They have been led here by strutting fools and blustering morons. Now they will pay the price. I have never yet lost a fight against these men. I have no intention of starting today. So together we will gain another victory. Brave Romans, prepare to defend yourselves. Start deployment. Right, let's do a very similar strategy to last time. We'll just put all the Hestati here, put fire at will on. We will group them. Group the ranged. Uh, where's group? I'm being a blind though. That's not the right units I went to do. We'll group them separate. These are my reserves. That I don't want to get hurt. There we go. Alright. Start the battle. Are they just going to come YOLO charge? They Looks like they are. So they've got their peasant barbarians here. Naked fanatics. But well, I'm glad they've got some sort of skirt loincloth thing going on the go. Same with the back. And then the unit of cavalry there. Is that all their units? Right. So got there, let's Keep using the back for model support. Move, my forces, move! Oh, I love tank commanders. There's constantly seen tank commanders now. Just that music as soon as I hear it. Definitely recommend going up and like see if you can find some of this stuff on YouTube or whatever. If you've never seen it, they were great shows, very educational. They had historians explain how stuff actually happened and, and what actually happened on the events and stuff like that. Actually looks like the archers are not in range, but according to they're firing and they're getting killed, so I'm not going to complain. I wonder if that's a glitch or why this is shown wrong. Maybe it's something to do with the early access build, but I don't know. Oh wait, you know what I think it is? This circle... There's not that much of an elevation. I thought there was a bit more than that. I thought there was... Because it looks like a... Yeah, from this angle, it looks like it's a lot of elevation. 
I'm guessing the circle's a set amount, and then there's some elevation, which is giving them slightly more range. If you look at it from down here, it looks like there's elevation. Look, it's coming down. Oh, it's that tune again. They're just the peasants, though. So I'm not too worried about them. Aww. Give me my song back. It would appear we stopped firing. Let's move up a smidgen. Oh, looks like it's engagement time. God, man, I like this one too, so. Here comes the barbarian cavalry. Actually, you know what? The chariai, maybe I should use. The chariai are good against horses. These guys are weak. So it kind of makes me. You know what? We will. Oh, wait, no, they're running. They're running anyway. This is no way for a leader to behave, but in battle, it's beyond belief. Enter the rear of those naked fanatics. Wait, oh, there's a unit there. Charge! There we go. Show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. Nice. Right. I can't remember how long we've been going now for, but I think we're going to call it a part here now. So, I'm going to say I hope you have all enjoyed this. I shall see you all next time where we shall continue this. I'll see you all there. Bye -bye. bye.